Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my reading wrap up for February and I did get through five books. Now two of these books, um, because it was Black History Month, I did pick two books uh, to read regarding black history and these two books actually revolved around the, the um, uh, slavery trade and I do have quite a few books about black history and quite a few black authors uh, but I did uh, pick these two uh, to read. So I'll go over those first, and um, the first one was Things Past Telling by Sheila uh, Williams, and the second one was The Coming by Daniel Black. So this first one, um, now the author was actually uh, looking through uh, an 1870 U.S. federal census for Ohio, and she actually came across uh, this woman. She was inspired this, by this woman who was actually supposedly 112 years old in 1870. So that kind of inspired her to write uh, this story. So it's not, um, I mean it's a fictional character, but it's kind of inspired um, by uh, what she found in the census. So she just imagined um, like this 120, 112 year old woman and what she has uh, seen in that. So uh, this one takes first takes place in Africa and this 10 year old girl uh, lives in this village with her family and uh, they describe her life and how happy it was and of course I mean it's just like any other family where they're they don't get along with some people and that but it's just uh, like just life uh, that they're living and then um, of course she is uh, captured by the slave traders and uh, probably the first first third uh, to the first half of the story takes place on the ship and the horrendous conditions on board and how many people died and what they had to the abuse sexual abuse physical emotional abuse that they put up with um, on the uh, ship and then the rest of the story is uh, the rest of her years uh, she is owned by different um, masters and uh, the relationships she had and the children she had and yeah it was it was um, it was not an easy read uh, none of the neither of these books were an easy read at all uh, it was very very tough uh, reading uh, because even though this is a fictional character and a fictional story um, it's based on what actually did happen to these people so yeah it's, it was uh, pretty gut-wrenching like um, this poor woman what she had to go through uh, you just uh, there's just no words um so yeah i i really did enjoy now i wasn't sure how they were going to compress her in, entire life into um a book it was about uh 300 and um 350 pages or, or so uh but yeah they did they focused on um uh the main things that had to be um looked at and and uh thought about so yeah i i do give it like a 4.5 out of 5 stars um it was um it was quite or quite the read now this one is about um uh the coming by daniel Bla yeah daniel black seeing things um yeah it was about uh it was about 225 pages, but more, boy, it just packed a punch. This one, this one was a hard read. Um, this one just, uh, probably for about three quarters of the book, I would say, um, yeah, maybe about half to three quarters of the book is actual voyage, um, over to, uh, America. And, yeah again it just goes over this one's this one's particularly brutal because they go into a lot of detail about the physical sexual emotional abuse um and just how many people died on board because of the conditions and that sort of thing so i mean this was a difficult read it was uh graphic at times but this was even this one whoa um so yeah if you're um 
triggered at all or you just don't want to read something like that then you certainly can skip this but um i am uh, fascinated by history and i do want to learn what happened in the past and uh, i think it kind of makes me a more empathetic person just reading about what people have gone through throughout history uh, what our ancestors went through and um so yeah it was uh intense read uh, but certainly an important read and his writing is very lyrical also um this one was told by the point of view of the the woman uh who was a slave and uh this one uh was also taken by the view of that person but this one is just much more lyrical this one's kind of a straightforward um, read about what had happened. Um, uh, let me just read a couple things. Um, so there was a kind of a rebellion on board uh, with the slaves and this one particular person, um, I believe he was like a chief of a tribe in Africa, but he was very quiet, very stoic. And then during the, just before the rebellion, um, it said, uh, still he didn't speak. He lifted his hands and spread his fingers wide. Angry, bulbous eyes focused our attention. Then slowly, he brought the fingers together until they melted into a tight fist. We understood. They had captured us because we had been divided. This was our lesson. And another quote that um, is really good. Um, uh, this is when they were being auctioned off. So each day they would go to the auction block and they would come back into this holding pen, as they called it, um, until the next day uh, to see who else would be sold off. 50 dwindled to 40. Horses and wagons carried them away daily as we wailed. Not until then did we know that some pain dwells in wretched silence. It's called agony. It finds a resting place in the soul and takes residence as if it belongs there. And it never leaves. It lingers like part of the body itself. It makes room for itself and settles in like an invisible disease, moving about at will, reminding the host of its deadly presence. If perchance one forgets its existence, memory causes agony to live again. Its, pain, its weight is unbearable, although it has no physical substance. It can lie dormant anywhere it chooses, then suddenly resurrect, bringing the carrier to its knees. It has no cure. Even time has no effect. Indeed, it grows over time, becoming more excruciating by the day. The only way to survive agony is to coexist with it. So yeah, just fantastic writing. So definitely give this one a five star. Okay, so after reading those, I needed something a little bit lighthearted. Um, and uh, I was really looking forward to this. I've heard it hyped. It's got excellent reviews on uh, Goodreads, but just didn't click too much with me. And I might be an outlier with this review, um, but it's just my opinion. Um, it was okay, but it just, I didn't live up to the hype for me. And that's Finley Donovan is uh, Killing It uh, by El Casimeno. Ellie Casamento. Uh, so yeah, the, I can suspend my disbelief. I mean, I read fiction my entire life. I've probably read uh, thousands of books. I can suspend my disbelief. But this was just one thing after another and after another and the decisions she made. But anyway, um, this uh, Finley Dominant is a writer and she is divorced from uh, this real prick of a husband. <laughs> And uh, she's kind of has like writer's block and that and her husband has fired the nanny so it's hard for her to sit down and write her books. So her editors and that are and her agent are just bugging her like you gotta finish it, you gotta finish your deadlines coming up, you gotta finish it. So her and her agent meet in this coffee shop and they're discussing the book and she kind of does crime um, fiction and that <clears throat> when she writes her books. So they're discussing the sort of the plot of this new book and uh, the woman beside her overhears it and she mistakens Finley Donovan for a hired assassin and she leaves a note saying she wants her to kill her husband. 
And of course, you know, initially she just kind of brushes it off and then she just kind of gets curious and kind of looks into things and then she gets wrapped up and um, involved where she does not want to get involved. Um, so yeah, it's a clever kind of plot in that um, it, it just didn't work for me. Now, there was some funny parts. I mean, I didn't laugh out loud. There's some parts that were funny in that. Um, but uh, the the characters, Finley Donovan, if I could reach through the pages and throttle her, I would. The decisions that this woman made, oh, just, and it wasn't just one or two stupid mistakes, stupid decisions she made. This was throughout the book. Like every time she made another stupid decision, I was just like, oh, I just, oh my Lord, woman, get your life together. Um. And yeah, you could think that was kind of funny, and but I just, I just got so frustrated with it. Um, yeah, it's just, and her relationship with her nanny, um, the way they were just so nonchalant about things, and I won't, don't want to say what things because I'll give it away, but they were so nonchalant. I was like, ah. Um, yeah, I just, you know, and I found the second book in a thrift store for like two bucks. And I don't know if I want to read it. Um, I mean, I give this about a two out of five stars, actually. And I know, I know some people absolutely love this series. They just eat this up. And that's fine. It's, I mean, it's just a lighthearted kind of read. Um, but I don't know. It's, it wasn't for me. Um... It, the the plot was just so ridiculous and which I mean that's fine and that's fine like I said I read thousands of books and most of them the the plot is just like out of this world but you know I just go with it I just go with the flow and I enjoy it but this one just her character I guess and her relationship there's a couple of um, guys that are interested in her those were totally unbelievable and uh, just uh, no it just wasn't for me and I know I'm it's not a popular opinion but um, it just didn't click with me all right uh, this one did click with me this is anatomy a love story by Dana Schwartz and now uh, this is a uh, YA fiction but it didn't read too too much like YA. Um, I really did enjoy this one. So uh, it says anatomy of love story. Now there is a little bit of a romance in here. Um, they don't delve too much into it. I think when they say anatomy of love story it's more this female character and her love for medicine and anatomy and and learning about the human body. I think that's really what it's focusing on. So this takes place in Edinburgh, Scotland. And oh, anything in Edinburgh, Scotland during the 18th century. I'm just like, oh, I love it. So this woman, um, I think she's 16 or 17. Uh, she wants uh, to become a surgeon. And uh, so she actually dresses in her brother's clothing and goes there and is admitted to the uh, Royal Edinburgh Anatomist Society. And after a while, um, someone figures out that she's a girl and not a boy and said, no, you, you can't stay. Um, and then the one doctor says, well, if you can pass the exam at Christmas or at in December, will let you continue with the uh, become a doctor. So I um I didn't realize that I think this is 1812 or somewhere around there. I think it's 1812. Oh, 1817. I didn't realize that to become a doctor you took a 4-month course. So she starts in September and then she's supposed to write the exam in December and become a doctor and so I googled it and sure enough uh, I guess back then, uh, depending on the country and that, uh, to become a doctor, it was mostly an apprenticeship. So you just followed a doctor around and that's how you learned. Um, but uh, 
slowly over time they started uh, introducing uh, classes in universities and that sort of thing to become a doctor. But at the time in Edinburgh, Scotland, it was like a four-month course. Uh, so yeah, I actually did enjoy it. So to become, um, get more practice in, uh, it was illegal to use uh, dead bodies for autopsies and dissections, but that's how doctors learned. So they would actually, only bodies they could dissect were criminals. Um, but yeah, they hung a few here and there, but it wasn't enough for a large group of people who are trying to learn medicine to practice on. So she actually hires this um, a young man who's a resurrectionist, which is a very fancy term for a grave robber, to get some bodies for her. And then she starts practicing um, um, medicine and dissecting bodies in this old building on her estate. Because she's very, her family's very well off, and of course, uh, they just want her to marry her first cousin. Yeah, uh, keep it in the family. Um, and she's quite willing to, but she still wants to become a doctor. So on this building on the estate, she is secretly um, dissecting bodies and um, practicing medicine on locals and that sort of thing to get the practice in so she can pass her exam. Um, but there's something happening to the resurrectionist in the city of Edinburgh. They're disappearing and uh, no one knows what's happening to them. So there's that mystery. But I, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. I love medical history. So I guess that certainly helps. I did like Hazel, the main character. And I mean, you can't beat the cover. It's beautiful. And of course, the bird was eating the book. Um, but I give that like a four, four and a half stars, I guess. Um... I, I did like it. And there is a second book out. Um, I'm just waiting for a good price to, to nab it there. And this book is uh, These Silent Woods by Kimmy Cunningham uh, Grant. So this kind of looks like a spooky thriller kind of thing, but it was more of a um, contemporary uh, drama, I guess you could say. So this uh, gentleman and his eight-year-old daughter live in a very isolated area. And uh, once a year, his good friend brings supplies in. And uh, they don't want to leave um, that area. They don't, they never go into town. They never see anyone. It's just him and his daughter. And over time, throughout the book, you find out why he's hiding and isolating himself and his daughter. Um, you find out, um, as the story goes along, his one neighbor um, uh, has figured out what is going on. So, um, but he never gives him away, but he doesn't trust this neighbor who knows kind of knows about his past uh, so one day his friend doesn't show up and he's forced to go into town uh, to get supplies and then uh, things sort of snowball from there um, so yeah it was uh, it was very slow paced uh, it was interesting finding out um, what happened to in his past and um, you sort of start getting attached to him and his daughter considering what has happened in the past. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty good. Um, I give it like uh, maybe 3.75 stars. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's um, a bit of a twist in the end, but nothing too major or anything like that. It's just kind of a slow family drama. So that's what I read in February. And uh, I did finish a medieval book. I love my medieval books. And uh, presently I am reading Road of Bones by Christopher Golden. And this is actually the first novel um, by this author that I have read. So I'm only, oh, I'm only like, 30 pages into it so far, but I, I do like his writing style so far. Uh, so this actually, there is actually a place called Rhoda Bones, and it's the Kalima Highway in Northeast Siberia. 
and this highway um like in the winter time it can this one town can go up like minus 100 degrees celsius in the winter time so it's one of the coldest areas in the world um it's a few hundred miles from the arctic circle it's very isolated and um so this the main character is a documentary filmmaker and he's um has his cameraman with him and they're just going to go and interview some people and take some film uh so they can um introduce it to uh tv channels to see if they want to buy it and that sort of thing so during stalin's time um this road was built and of course Stalin was an absolutely brutal dictator killed millions of his own people so this road of bones was actually built by prisoners who stayed in gulags in Siberia and if you went to a prison in Siberia there's a pretty good chance you weren't going to go home again uh, so they estimate that at least minimum a quarter million people died making this highway these prisoners and basically what did they do with the bodies they just uh as they're making the road if you died they just threw you in and they covered up the road and uh went on on their way so probably underneath this road there's like a quarter, at least a quarter million people buried so um yeah i guess this uh becomes kind of like a horror thriller um yeah, it's very, like, even, like, 30 pages in, it's very, very atmospheric. Uh, uh, that's why I want to read in the wintertime. We're getting, we've got lots of snow still. So, yeah, it's very, very atmospheric. And, um, yeah, well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that one. So that's it. That is my reading wrap-up. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what great books you've been reading. And um, everyone take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.